random news not really entertainment news but entertaining news it's been 30 years since the titanic was discovered at the bottom of the sea so sad this is a ship that they said could never sink oh but it sank it did sink never say never anyway some people are making money off this 30th anniversary of course after that titanic movie jack and rose anything titanic now is a money maker so the last lunch menu before the disaster happened is going to be auctioned at the end of the month and the auctioneers are saying it could go for anything from 50 to 70 thousand dollars like someone is going to shell out fifty thousand dollars just to own the last lunch menu of the titanic I really want to be a hater right now and say that's a waste of money and the person should go and pay people school fees or support Akon in his solar power project in Africa with that money but I won't be a hater. I refuse to be a hater. Everyone is allowed to spend their money on what they want to so if it's $50,000 on a piece of paper with suggestions of what to eat written on it, so be it. It's not my business. Welcome to The Gist. I'm your host Toyosi Phillips. The Gist. Welcome to the show. Thank you for watching. It's going to be an exciting one. You just sit back and relax. Joining me later on the show is Laulu Shebanjo. Listen, if they're looking for whose name to change to talent, is Laulu. If I had my way, I would change his name personally. Like when I see him in public, I'll say, hey, talent. How are you, talent? Seriously, Laulu is multi-talented. He's a singer, songwriter, leader of his own band, Laulu and the Afro Mysterics. He's also an actor, an artist, like he draws and paints, and then he's also an activist. So a lot of his paintings and lyrics to his music are very politically conscious. I'm really looking forward to talking to him later. For those wondering what happened in Mauritius this week, you know all the celebrities were there. It was the second annual Multi-Choice Africa Content Showcase Extravaganza, organized by Multi-Choice for Content Showcasing, basically. That's like the worst definition ever. This content showcase had media personalities in attendance, as well as media executives, and basically VIPs of the African creative industry. That's why Tosi Buckner was there, as well as IK, Olori Supergirl, the Bella Niger crew, the Maven crew, and a lot of other big wigs. So, those providing content were in the same space as those distributing and airing the content. That sounds like a better definition. But yeah, that's what happened in Mauritius this week. <laughs> now let me tell you why I like America. No, I have to tell you why I like America. See, this place, they know how to celebrate people and they are great encouragers. I'm serious. If by chance you chase a robber out of a grocery store and someone makes a video and somehow that video makes the news, or the video goes viral, that's it, you have become a celebrity. Before you know it, you are granting interviews, getting medal of honor, endorsing products, in fact, starting your own TV show, writing your own book, and that TV show is not on any Raz net Major networks, you will have your own TV show, like your life will change literally in a snap. Now, Dancing with the Stars is coming back for a new season in a few days, and they unveiled the celebrities who will be on the show this week. Guess who is on the show as a celebrity? One of the guys that tackled that gunman on the train in France. You guys know the story. So he was honored by the French government and the American government. And now he's officially a celebrity. Like he's going to be on Dancing with the Stars as one of the stars. Before you know it, talk show host. Before you know it, book. Then book tour. Melonia. Bilonia. Overnight. Because he just captured somebody on a train. See, I'm almost certain that there are people already lining up to be his manager, his agent publicist, stylist, his life has changed. Nigerians, please, is it possible for us to imbibe this culture? We picked up a lot of things from the West. Can we pick this one up as well? Because I know, I know for a fact, if it was a Nigerian that tried that thing on the train, people would tell him, ah, well, you will just die for nothing. Instead of it to run, you are fighting with somebody with a gun. Don't try it again, no, don't try it again. That's what they'll tell the person. Then we'll hear about him for maybe two more weeks after receiving presidential handshake and max one million naira because it's like one million naira is the ceiling for doing good in Nigeria. And then that'll be the end. Can we change this? Like seriously, and now I'm talking to those in the private sector. Not every time celebrity to endorse your product. Sometimes ordinary person who has done extraordinary something. Don't worry, your product will still sell. Talking about endorsements, I was so happy when I heard this news. Please tell me you've seen this video or at least you've heard people say, get out of here, man. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. You know what I'm saying? Get in Ibu. Get out of here for real. You know what I'm saying? Get out of here for real. You know what I'm saying? 
He got a deal with Etsy Salad. Francis Odega, he's now one of their brand ambassadors and his commercial is funny. I can't play the whole thing, but this is a clip from it. You know what I'm saying? Now let me tell you something. You just say, all the money when I go make for this world, uh, and only you get some now. Uh, uh, just because now only you and me. You know what I'm saying? Hala. <laughs> Congratulations to him. He's been acting for ages. I'm just glad he has found his niche. Moving on, it was only a matter of time before a major Ebola movie was done. Of course, immediately the epidemic hit, Nollywood went into action with several Ebola movies. There was Ebola Doctor 1 and 2, Malaria Ebola 1 and 2, Ebola Don't Craze, Ebola Greeting, all sorts of movies just coming out from all sorts of places. Shout out to Nollywood, I can never knock your hustle. Like Adela will say, you not do well. Well, now, <laughs> there is a movie being produced and it's called 93 Days and this is different because it focuses on the life of Stella Adadevo, the doctor who literally single-handedly prevented an Ebola outbreak in Nigeria. That role is going to be played by renowned Nollywood actress Bimba Kintola, so I'm hoping and praying that it turns out well. It will be nice to immortalize Stella Adadevo that way, oh, don't you think so? I think so. All those Ebola don't craze, Malaria Ebola, and all those other movies basically created awareness, yes, but what they did was to make quick money. This should have more substance. And on air personality, Gbemi Olateru has released a new line of her Gbemi Soke shoes. The first release she did had just flats. Now these ones have heels. It's nice to see young women casting their bread upon many waters. And what makes her shoes different is that it caters to women with large feet. It's not easy getting shoes in large sizes for women. So she's really filling a gap and she deserves all the support she can get. If you can go out to buy Rihanna's perfume or Beyonce's uh, stick on nails or Juliana Rancic's wine or clothes from Dash Store, the Kardashians, you can buy the Misuke shoes, buy African. Support, support her. Before we go on a break, happy belated birthday to Sion, also known as Omo Ibadan. The singer celebrated her birthday on September 2nd and released a new single called Story. I hear she took jabs at her record label in this song, saying something about them paying more attention to Skills and Aramide, who are also signed under the record label. Now, I know that record labels tend to focus on the acts who are making them money, so... I really don't know. My unsolicited advice, Sion, get money, try, then get a mad, when I say mad, I mean a mad producer who is well known to work with you and then feature somebody who is on fire right now, maybe someone from the YBNL crew or Kiss Daniel or Faust, someone who is shot hot right now and make sure you sign an agreement with the person requiring the person to promote the song and just make one nice hit song before the end of the year and that's what will cause people to invite you to all those Lagos and Abuja December events, seriously all you need in my opinion is one nice hit song and strategic december events to leverage on and then in 2016 you can take over the world seriously try it but happy belated birthday okay we're going on a short break now lalu shebanjo will be in the studio with me when we get back this is the gist <laughs> Guys, welcome back. I'm here with the multi-talented Laolu Shebanjo. I told you about him earlier. He's an actor, a singer, a songwriter, an instrumentalist, an activist, an artist. He he wears many caps. Welcome to the show, Laolu. Thank you, Tess. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Please, how do you juggle all those things? Mm. <laughs> I just, I don't know. What do you mean juggle? It's like I'm doing many things. I, I, don't want, I don't want to say I'm doing many things. I'm just living. You're just living. Yeah, I just it's, it's how I how I exist, how I come alive. You're yeah. basically living your dream, though. Yeah, I would say that. I was reading up on you, and I saw that you studied law. Yeah. And then you just left all that, all your degree, and you just moved into the arts fully. I would like to clear the air first. I'm born to Nigerian parents. <laughs> okay. And for anybody who, who's you know lived in Nigeria, I would understand. When when I was growing up, it wasn't. Wasn't an option, like <laughs> to, I <want> say, to sing. <laughs> I want to be a musician. I mean, I, I I tried it, you know, but I met a lot of like you know like brick walls in my house. Like yeah. it was like you know you have to do this line, you have to you know. So it was an unspoken code, mm. you know. So you didn't you didn't you didn't have like a choice, sure. you know. So, but I was, I, I I was I never stopped doing art. But then right. it was like my my dad would tell me, oh you are you are you are minoring in your major, you're majoring in your yeah. minor. <laughs> that, that was his line, like all throughout growing up. So 
I would say, why, why, why would you be you who would decide what my major or what my minor is? You know, mm. so we had that, you know, back and forth for a while. So it was, you know, after law school, I worked a little bit and I'm, I'm just like, man, you know, I was like torn between like jobs and practicing full-time art, mm. making music. So I would go to the office <laughs> you know, and daydream, you know, that kind of thing. And you just sit down there and like wishing you know, having ideas, you know. So you're not, like, productive, like... In like, both, you know, actually. In both. So you're, like, you know, in both walls and trying to make ends meet, you know, struggle and everything. So yeah. after a while, just like, man, you know, like they say, ekonlomo <laughs> korinku, just hakolari <laughs> monon. You're actually good at what you do. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. you perform multiple times, Thank and you. every time I think you give it a hundred. Like you know how some people just sing <laughs> and they're cool and everything. You don't really hear. You like are so passionate. It's Thank it's you. always fun seeing you perform. Thank and you. I'm going to ask this question for the rest of your fans. Please, when are we getting an album? If you check my SoundCloud, my website, I have some music there already. Okay. Now I have a body of work that. I'm about to put out. Mm -hmm. But then I've been inspired lately and I've been working on new stuff, new material. So I like to add that to what I already have. And then I promise you guys are gonna have a body of work top like early next year. Amen to that. Early next year. Amen to I'm that. gonna put something out. I actually said earlier you are very politically aware, like you're like yeah, a social activist in yeah. my opinion. Like yeah. I see you at rallies. We, I don't think we were brought up like that, to be honest. Growing up in Nigeria, we're taught to just mind our business, stay away from trouble. trouble. But I see you talking like Black Lives Matter. I see some of your paintings reflecting the troubles going on in America. Mm -hmm. And even the stress and pains, like mm -hmm. fuel scarcity in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to take a stand for well, social injustice? I think everybody should take a stand, irrespective of where you are. You know, um, we, we, we all need to talk about you know, what is not right in our community, like where we live in our neighborhood. Well, I think that's something my father had, like something I took from him, because he, he always liked to challenge authority, quote unquote. He was an activist, was like Ghani Fahami, mm. Tai Sholari. Yeah. Um, he always talked about these guys when we were growing up, talk about Fela, you know, and it was more like, you know, people listen to the music, we talk about problems in Nigeria. You know how it is in the 80s when, there was a lot of, you know, corruption and when Delegio was killed. I remember yeah. when Delegio was killed, it was on my birthday. Oh, wow. And, you know, that day was just, he kept talking, he gathered his friends, you know, they were talking, in the room and everything. So, I mean, those things, you know, <laughs> formed like, in, in my mind, right now, you know, I wouldn't, that, at that time, I really didn't have a grasp of what was happening. Yeah. Because I was too young. But, you know, growing up, I began to see that it was just in me that anytime I see anything wrong, I would want to speak, speak up. up. You nice. know, so I speak up through art, speak up through music, I speak up through conversations like this. Like this, yes, <laughs> you know, conversations. Yeah, you know, I always try, you know, we always like, my mom saw me in a protest, like, Black Lives Matter, she called me like, ah. Be oh, careful. You know, be careful. Like, ah, exactly. You know, ah, well, don't, don't join them, I'm not <laughs> one of them. And, you know, and that's the, like, the African thing that yeah. we, and it's not our fault because, we, we we are so detached, we are kind of we're blessed. We're discoverse we're yeah. again, yeah. Blessed and lucky that, you know, we are not, like, a lot of people don't experience what they call racial... Discrimination. Yeah, discrimination or, or prejudice. So you really don't understand what it means, mm. you know, if you live in Africa. But when you cross the border and you get here, and somebody sees you, and before they even say anything, they just call you black. Yeah. Then you begin, and when you say you're not black, people look at you like, you're crazy. What do yeah. you mean? Because they don't understand. I, I, I like to say first, I'm Nigerian or I'm Yoruba. Yeah. But then you could say that all you want. But if you're walking down the street and the cop sees you, the first thing is a black buddy. Yeah. You know they don't they don't take into account of nobody really cares. America yeah. really doesn't care where you're from. Okay. So that that has yeah. moved so you to actually take a stand. You inherit all these problems, yeah. whether you like it or not. Once you okay. cross the border. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're yeah, talking yeah. about your music. Let's talk about your art. I've been yeah. looking at these shoes, Laolu, in front of everybody. I'm going to ask, when am I getting my own pair of these shoes? Is that, is that, is that a trick, is that a trick a, question? Yes, it's a <laughs> is that this a, is, is that beautiful. A trick like, question. Thank you. This is so beautiful. And Thank what? You. So you came up with this line. It's called what? Walk in my soul. Walk in my soul. Yeah, it's soul, more like walk in my soul. Yeah, as well. Yeah, okay. walk in my soul. Yeah. How? How did you come up with this? So I was playing out around with 
different ideas. Like like I said, I just got got bored of the regular art on canvas, art on walls, because I did a couple of murals in New York. I did a couple of like exhibitions and um, I've been fortunate enough, I went to Art Basel last year. I did um, an exhibition at Wicksfield, which featured the likes of Danny Simmons. I've done a couple of, you know, but then, you know, I just thought about the fact that a lot of artists, to be honest, it's really hard out here making it as an artist. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's more like you have to give it your 110, 120%, you know. And then even at that, there are no guarantees. Mm. So as an artist, you have to think outside the box. Yeah. So you have to begin to think, okay, what else can I do? Mm. So I've been thinking, okay, I can place my set doing like a couple of t-shirts, then a couple of mugs, and a couple of, you know, then, I mean, this idea of the, the, the shoes was like, okay, I'm not printing the shoes, I'm not doing like, I'm going to like get shoes and like design shoes for people. Like, it's like taking a concept of mine, like I call some of them Walking My Soul, I call them the um, Yoruba Proverb series. I take a Yoruba Proverb, for mm. example, and then I, I put it in a, in a context of today's living, and then if somebody wants me to do something for them, I'll mix it with their own identity and then make it into art form. And every pair is different. Like this yeah. left is different from the right. And then no other person owns it except you. So these are things that I, I won't be making this forever. This is going to be worth a lot more, <laughs> a lot yeah. more in, in, in years to come. Yeah, God willing. Yeah, um, I'm yeah, still, yeah. I'm still I'm here around. now, actually, honestly, thinking money. <laughs> how, would you, how would you, I know that you want to tailor it to each person and yeah. make it individual, mm -hmm. blah, but how would you mass produce this? It would be lovely to, it would be awesome to walk into a store, yeah. say, I don't know, stores have, have they skipped my mind now, but it would be really, really nice to walk into a store and see these shoes mm. there. Is, is that something you're yeah, actually a lot thinking of people, about? Yeah, a lot of people are talking about that. You know, you should get endorsements. Yes. You should get into this place, get in that place. And people are, you know, I'm talking to a few companies though, but I I really don't want to lose the originality mm. and um, the art that goes into it. Because the thing about this, this thing that makes it special is because it's not mass produced. Because yeah. it is special. So anybody who owns one, owns it for the rest of their lives. And no other person owns that pair on the planet. Mm. So it makes it very exclusive. And that is what art is about, exclusivity. If people want to get this now, how can they contact you? You can go to my website, Laolu Shabanjo. L-A-O-L-U. Yeah. S-E-N-B-A-N-J-O. Mm. Laolu Shebanjo. Dot com. Dot com, yeah. Okay. Dot com. So if you go there, you're going to see a request form. You can fill the request form and um, send it to me and I'll reply. No, I definitely, yeah, I definitely yeah, will be getting yeah, a pair soon. Yeah, I definitely will be getting a pair soon. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank coming. You. One Thank word of so encouragement much, yeah. for striving upcoming artists, singers, multi-talented people who are not sure how to channel their energy. Mm. One mm. word of encouragement mm. for them. Just know that there are no boundaries. Just do your own thing. Follow your your art, follow your heart, follow follow your guts. Sometimes we just have to take chances. You have to take, and the only thing you have is your time and your energy. Mm. Those are the currencies, those are the luxuries that we have. So you just put the time in it. You just put the time in it and you keep putting the time in it until it gets to a level that you know everybody, you're gonna have a gut feeling that yeah, I'm ready to put my stuff out to the world yeah. and then you know you can't you can't you can't put it out to the world. And also always stay connected to your creator. Just always know that he's he's he didn't he didn't he didn't create you like bring you to the surface just to leave you. you know, just to leave you or he didn't put he put everything inside every one of us. Like deposited different gifts, different, you know, yeah. what would make us thrive. So it's for you to find that thing and then participate in the journey. Like you actively, actively do something to make sure awesome. that your destiny comes alive. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Thank for you Chelsea for having here. me. I'm really grateful and it's, it's always a pleasure. You can call me back, man. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. La Lucia Banjo, everyone. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> the end of the show guys thank you so much for watching and thank you laulu aka mr talent for stopping by i wish you all the very best in everything every single thing you do okay guys
please like this video drop a comment and share with friends i'll see you next time and remember you can be everything you want to be mm -hmm.